Can you hear that voice also? She says, recording in progress. Pastor Doug with you for another midweek moment on this uh, December 15th uh, in the year of our Lord. Isn't it hard, I think, to get into the Christmas spirit when it's going to be 60 degrees today <clears throat> and then snow Saturday, uh, potentially? Uh, so um, anyway, we're here and we're together and it's a midweek moment and I thank you for tuning in. Um, obviously, as you all know, uh, Kelly uh, Stur has um, left her position as director of communications and Kelly usually took these midweek moments and, and dressed them up and made them look nice in a package that was sent out to you. And uh, I lack that ability and I haven't found someone to do it for me yet. So um, they're coming as a link. And I feel I want to say when they come from the two church offices uh, on a Wednesday, you can trust that link. But today, I want to welcome you uh, to a little meeting I'm calling Warriors Anonymous. Warriors Anonymous. Do you in your life sometimes worry? I would say that if uh, you do, and all of us do, you're normal. You are normal. <laughs> I'm not sure why I do this. It has nothing to do with it, does it? it? The production staff just finished this right on time for, for press date. Worry, W-O-R-R-Y. I worry, and I am uh, welcoming you to Worriers Anonymous. Hi, my name is Doug, and I'm a worrier at times. <laughs> I'm sure all of us do. I think it's a normal human reaction uh, that happens in life that when we are pressed in as we are in our world today, that it's easy to worry. And I want to give you permission, if you will, to worry. And I'll say in a minute a few things about it, but, you know, we, we do it. It's our natural human inc inclination. Uh, I worry this morning. Uh, my daughter, Emily, is again under the weather and is awaiting a COVID test result. She shares, uh, her, she shares her condo with a roommate who uh, tested positive in a home test. So I worry as a, as a dad, that's what you do, I guess, on some level. Um, I worry about the current coronavirus trends and what this is gonna mean for us coming into the winter season again in our congregations. Uh, it's already been a year and a half or more, and we are, uh, you know, we've struggled in both places with, with uh, people uh, joining us for worship and all the rest of it. So that happens. I know I think about the wider world and, you know, I worry sometimes about, you know, the things that most of the things we worry about, friends, are out of our control, right? So I know that the things I'm going to list if I continue on to talk about worries are out of my control, right? So in regard to coronavirus, I pray um, for all of the things that need to happen to help protect us from that. Uh, I pray uh, for my daughter, Emily, of course, to have a negative result, or if it's positive, to be low symptomatic. She's vaccinated, and hopefully it'll just be a few days of uh, recuperation at home. But anyway, all that aside, I just wanted to honor you today if you are someone who worries that it's okay to worry, that we all do it. Now, how do we handle it when we look at our Bible verse today in Matthew 6, 25? Jesus in Matthew 6, 25 says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Now, I just want to say right out of the gate, this is Matthew writing. The Lord says that, but at the same time the Lord says it, the Lord knows that we are worriers. And in the same time the Lord says, don't worry, and we worry, the Lord loves us, and it's okay. Jesus himself, I think, modeled some worry in the Garden of Gethsemane, the night in which he was betrayed from the cross. He said, my God, why have you forgotten me? That's way beyond worry, I get it. But, but in other words, it's a human natural inclination. But what do you do with the worry? If you let it cause you to get into a fret and a fume and you can't get out of bed and you're distressed and you can't function and you're withdrawn from your family and friends, you need to get some, some help. 
either with your medical doctor or a counselor or a good friend or call your pastor and I'll walk with you in that. Uh, but the Lord says that, but he says, uh, don't worry about your life, what you're going to eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more important than all of that? And then the Lord says, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor store away in barns, yet your heavenly father feeds them. Aren't you of more value than they? Are you hearing this, friends? Look at the birds of the air. They're taken care of, and so will you and I. And I had an occasion in my life years ago, I've talked about this in messages, I've written about it, where I was extremely worried. Uh, it was in my seminary processes. We were at a conference and, you know, when you're in seminary, you've committed to the Lord and you're going through your process, there's things that are without, outside of control about where you're going to be placed and how's this all going to work out. All of the things we normally worry about, I had in my own heart. And then at this conference, I remember being in Richmond. I remember stepping out on a break onto a patio, and I remember seeing these cardinals off in the tree, these beautiful, gorgeous red birds uh, off in the tree. And every time I have worried or wanted to worry, uh, I promise you, friends, I have seen a cardinal in my yard, uh, in on walks. Um, I see them all the time and have begun to collect cardinals. I have a little display over here in my St. Andrew's office. Um, I have some flags that go out in front of my home. This one goes up this week, of course, you know, Merry Christmas. It's got the cardinal on, in the Christmas tree itself. Uh, this meant a lot to me personally, and I hope and pray, friends, that you have your cardinal, that you have something or something that you can see that you comes across you in your life. Some say, you know, it's when you find a coin. Some say it's a certain song on the radio. A lot of this comes up in our lives and we want to worry. And I just wanted to encourage you to find your cardinal, something that you can look to. Because as I saw that cardinal on that day, this verse came to mind. God takes care of the birds of the air. How much more God will take care of you and I? So as I said this past Sunday, let's take our worries and turn them around and turn them into prayers, right? Uh, Jesus goes on to say, why, why worry about your clothes or what we're going to eat? Uh, seek first the kingdom of God and whatever is right. And don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough on its own. Amen. We're in a Christmas season. It's a difficult time for many. It's emotions. You know, I was thinking this morning, driving in, you know, listening to music and, and reflecting on some of my family memories, uh, and you worry, uh, you know, and, and sometimes in life, it just takes hold of us. And I just want to honor you today as we conclude our Warriors um, Anonymous meeting, that you are not anonymous with God when we worry, that God is love and God is present. And uh, please silence their telephones before you take a meeting. And um, see, now I worry about the caller. Just kidding. Um, MJ's here at St. Andrews. Listen, warriors, it's okay. God loves us. Be encouraged that the baby who comes in the uh, Christmas Eve story of Jesus born in our midst uh, loves us in the midst of our worries and travels with us. And look for your cardinals or something that's meaningful to you that you've maybe taken inspiration from and know that this is the spirit of God in, with, and through us, so that when we want to worry, God wants to take that worry. And I invite us to turn our worries around and offer them up as prayers. And in that prayer, we can let go, as we said this past Sunday in the Philippians passage, that when we pray, the peace that passes all understanding will guide our hearts and our minds. Where? Onto Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. God be with you. Till we meet again. Amen.